I am Andrei Shevchenko. A year ago, Russian forces invaded my country. Since then, Ukrainian people have been suffering so much, but no sign the war is ending. In the last 12 months, more than 7,000 innocent people have been died. A million small have to leave homes. In the last year, I've been traveled back to Ukraine so many times, and I see a lot of devastation by myself. It's heartbreaking. What do you remember from a year ago? What do you remember about that day, February the 24th, when the Russian troops I invaded? I actually remember every second of uh, exactly that morning will happen, because I can't forget that, you know, especially a phone call from my mom, and uh, she was upset, she was uh, crying, and she said that the war started, and that that was probably the hardest moment in my life, to hear something from from my mom. I remember speaking to you an awful lot. You were trying to get, you, your mom didn't want to leave, did she? And, and you were trying to persuade her and the rest of the family to leave, but they couldn't get out. I spoke a few times with mom. I, uh, with my sister just try to understand the situation and obviously my family uh, it doesn't want to leave. I, I just have a word with my sister uh, but she said there was a, a jam traffic, everybody tried to leave, uh, it's, it's impossible to get tickets and uh, my sister said we want to stay and see how the situation, you know, maybe like I said to you, maybe you know, something gonna uh, change quickly, but uh, that was the decision in the first first couple of days. You immediately wanted to help your country and your people, and you even thought about joining the army, join, joining the armed forces to fight Russia, didn't you? But my, I, I, I tried. I was desperate to go back. I, I just want to go back to 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 help my family. You know, to help uh, to see the situation, to to help my country. And my mom, you know, we, we spoke a lot. She she said to me, "You use your voice. You talk." <laughs> you got very close to President Zelensky. Yeah, obviously. You know, I know him for a long time. When the war started, I think. Uh, you know, in a way, how we react is just bring people together. His his first talk uh, to the people was very emotional, and but it's it was very strong. He united people people together. He, he decided to stand up and and defend our territory, our, uh, our freedom, our, our future, and our, our choice, personal choice. But he had a specific message to you, and it was a similar message. To the one your mum gave you, especially in the first couple couple of weeks, uh, I think we all realize, you know, um, all the important uh, athletes and uh, and and figure in Ukraine like uh, Vladimir Klitschko, Vitaly Klitschko, uh, Alexander Zinchenko, Yarmolenko, is many many uh, other athletes and important people in Ukraine, businessmen who been not in the country, been abroad, uh, you know, immediately united together. The British people have felt an awful lot of affinity to the Ukrainian people at this time. Have you, have you felt that? Of course, yeah. The, you know, I'm, this is my chance, Anke. I think again and again and again, all the people who have been supported Ukraine, the, the government, journalists, the, the common people, the society, the football society, sports society, there's everybody uh, who understand uh, the freedom, who understand the, how it was difficult uh, for Ukraine and decide to help Ukraine. What's life like in Ukraine for the people right now? Very tough, uh, but I, I think so. You know, the, the Ukrainian people show strong courage uh, and show the, everybody that we are brave people. What do you sense now? Do you think a year on, we're any closer to this war ending, to, to Ukraine winning? We just try to defend our country. We, ch we try to get back our land. We try to get back and clear uh, all the territory of what been part of Ukraine. 
uh, obviously the the negotiation uh, in the moment is impossible. This is a message from the government, a message from Zelensky. Look, we have to do everything to you know to support. I have to do everything to support my country. I wanted to ask you specifically about sport because, of course, you, were, uh, amongst everything else you've achieved in football, you were the Ukraine national team manager, and you got you were in charge a lot of a lot of these players now, and I wonder how much pride you have in Zinchenko and Yarmolenko and, and the Shakhtar squad, and, and and every Ukrainian sports person that seems to have stood up and known their role known that they have a voice and spoken whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch as well for the good of Ukraine you must have real pride in, in those people I'm very proud about uh, Ukrainian athletes who've been in the country you know and uh, a lot of uh, uh, joined the, the army start to defend and fight uh, for Ukraine and uh, so many athletes who've been abroad uh, you never forgot about Ukraine an idea of what the last 12 months have been like for you you can get used to everything unfortunately um, that's i think that's the biggest problem of war because people adapt in ways we would never imagine we could the hardest part is to see the despair of the people who lost everything lost their families lost their children lost their home for for every single individual the 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 level of losing everything is different. You know, for someone it's losing a family member, for someone it's losing all the family. I mean, it's the despair, the the grief, the, the destruction is is something is really hard to take on. I mean, you can get you used to dead bodies. Unfortunately, you do. You do you, you you can get used to the smell of it, but the fear you also get used to. Everybody's scared. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm also scared. There's there's nothing brave in not being scared. Uh, it's more of a sadistic, I would say, not being scared. But you get adapted. You get adapted to the shelling, you get adapted to the bullets. You, I mean, you, you can adapt to everything. I had a few times, well, twice, when I was, a, I would say, a split, a split of a second away from not being here. Do you get a sense that Ukraine is winning this war? It's a hard question because let's be realistic here. Ukraine is not going to be able to win this war without the support of the world. We just don't have the. We have the resources of human, of people, you know, who are willing, who are willing to fight. But we so don't hey, have what, enough. What was that noise then? Was that a, was that a missile? Or? No, that's drones. That, that's practicing drones. But it's pretty blah, because you hear them on the front line. <laughs> I don't know how far your life as a, an international tennis star seems. Do you even remember it? Do you, are you still in contact with friends that are still on the circuit and that sort of thing? Sometimes, but I mean, the first month was brutal. I've received uh, hundreds of messages from my colleagues, from former, from current, from employees of the tournaments, from the ATP employees, you know, from WTA Tour players. But it's hard. I've seen some of the guys during the ceremony in Milan when I went, uh, it was November, I think. But it's hard because, you know, they have their own lives. They carry on with their own lives, their own problem. They, what can they say? That they're sorry. I know that they're sorry and they say it, but there's not much else there is to say because it's an awkward situation where I'm in trenches, they live their lives. Generally, tennis has allowed Russian and Belarusian players to still compete as individuals whilst it's banned those countries from team competition, it's removed the nation's flags, etc. What's your view on that? When you're fighting Russia and Russian troops and seeing people die on the front line, what do you say about the politics and what the tennis authorities are doing here? We're talking about people who did not um, express their position, who did not say that they're against the war, who did not say that they're against the invasion of Ukraine, who did not say actually nothing. But when the war is on, it's not about whether they support or not. It's about whether killing is okay, whether invading other country is okay, because we have all the countries who are supporting us. 
including Australia and, and all the other countries where they compete. So the countries are spending millions of dollars to help Ukraine to win the war, yet they're paying millions of dollars to Russians who pay taxes back. And then, I mean, it, it's bizarre. Can you describe what it's like being on that war zone? You cannot control it. We had a few incomings not far from our station uh, in recent weeks. Uh, I'm talking about missiles landing about four or 500 meters away from our, our station. Um, once you are in an artillery fight or a mortar fight, it's pure luck. It's basically, you, you don't, you don't, whether it's going to land 50 meters away from you or whether it's going to land at you. You cannot control those things. You're a professional tennis player, and I wonder how it feels when you have fired or helped fire that artillery that you know has killed Russian soldiers. Have you squared that with your within your mind? Absolutely. I'm absolutely fine with it. They came here. I've seen their deeds in Hostomel and Butcher. I've seen bodies which they're trying to burn, covered in uh, mats and, and pillows and and poured with gas on. So I have no doubt, I have no regrets whatsoever in what I'm doing here because I'm here in my country, in my land, repelling the invasion of people who have nothing to do here. Nobody welcomed them here. Nobody invited them here to come. Yet they come, they kill, they destroy. They damage life of kids which live in bomb shelters, which have no school, no future sports, nothing. I have zero regrets. How tough is life for your family for, and for other Ukrainian people right now? Well, the last four months, there are big problems with electricity, so many people don't have any heat, they don't have light, and now they can be a little better, I don't know how much I know, but I think that people in Ukraine are only stronger, that the enemy doesn't kill us, so it's difficult to imagine how people live, and I think that people will become stronger. I wanted to ask you about Zinchenko, because there's that famous moment when you played Manchester City last season where you two hugged on the pitch and it was very emotional to watch. What do you remember of that and, and, and how you were feeling at the time? This is probably the most difficult moment because this was the first game after the start of the war. And everyone was shocked and I just cried. No, yeah. Слезы на очах было до игры и после игры я не мог успокоиться. Ну, за сборную Украины завжди классно играть, и я гордый тем, що я можу вдягати цю футболку. Але перша гра після початку війни, коли ми грали з Шотландією, це, було, це була гра не про тактику чи фізичні готовності, а це було про, про дух і про наше бажання виграти цю гру. How do you think all this ends? Ми це питали багато разів в моїй команді і в Англії люди питали, але я не, я не знаю, коли це закінчиться. Я надію, що це закінчиться максимально скоро, але це дуже важко представляти, що це все йде до сих пір. They didn't understand why I... I waited uh, the players uh, and I helped my players. У нас на мою пам'ять було 3 чи 4 гри, коли 
Гра розпочалася, ми почали грати і пішла воздушна тривога. Всі повинні йти в бомбосховище. Сиділи як мінімум годину, півтори, чекали, поки ця тривога закінчиться. I can't see we we give up the strength of the Ukrainian people just to have freedom in the life. This is for what we fighting. We fighting for our territory, we fighting for our future. Швидко, давай, вогонь, вогонь. Well, in that moment I was in uh, Kiev. It was a very, very difficult uh, moment, a uh, very sad moment. could have left the country sooner, is that right? But you wanted to wait until the players and their families were out of the country first, is that right? Yes, and my family was, uh, was uh, angry, no? Uh, and was uh, sorry for me. Uh, they didn't understand uh, uh, why I, I waited. Uh, the players uh, and I helped my players, but uh, one time I, I I came back in in Italy. I explained my 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 family the reason, and they were happy. What have you learned from that experience that you went through a year ago? Uh, I, I learned that in one day you can change everything. We stayed in, in inside of the hotel with the 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 the, the bomb with shelling with at the start of the season before the the war i didn't understand the the, the ukrainian people but after the war when the war started i under, i understood the courage the the proud of these people and uh, and I changed idea, and now I I, I love this uh, this people, this country. That my idea uh, should be to 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 back one day to to work in Ukraine um, to to complete my work because uh, mm, I lost my team, I lost my players. Uh, and for this uh, was a, a, a difficult situation to accept. Did you see the fighting? Did you see people dying on both sides? Бачу таке, що не хотілося б, щоб мої діти, а також онуки бачили те, що бачив я. Ми були і під обстрілами, і повірте мені. Тому я кажу, що це дуже страшно, і не боїться тільки те, хто цього не розуміє. А на те, що я бачив, то це дуже страшно і. Коли гинуть твої побратими, получають тяжкі поранення, це дуже важко це не передати словами. Але це є реальність сьогоднішнього життя України, це є реальність нашого народу України, який бореться за своє майбутнє, бореться за те, щоб ми жили так, як ми хочемо жити. І робити те, що ми хочемо, а ні в якому разі не під ким не ходити і не бути. Ми хочемо бути вільною нацією, вільним народом.
У нас, на мою пам'ять, було три чи чотири гри, коли гра розпочалася, ми почали грати і пішла воздушна тривога. Всі повинні йти в бомбосховище. Сиділи як мінімум годину, півтори, чекали, поки ця тривога закінчиться. Після цього виходили і догравали матч. Це реалії сьогоднішнього життя України. Але ми ще раз цим показуємо, що ми не зламні. Навіть в той час, коли у нас в країні війна, ми все рівно виходимо, граємо. І ці ігри показують по Ютубу, по записі. І наші, дуже багато фанатів наших, і не тільки нашого клубу, а всіх інших клубів, зараз знаходяться на передовій і захищають нашу країну. І тому вони все рівно дивляться ці ігри, радіють нашим перемогам, переживають наші програші разом з нами. How important is football still with a war going on in Ukraine? Трошки коротше скажу. Дивіться, будь-який вид спорту дуже то це футбол чи це якийсь другий вид спорту, нема різниці, але зараз в той час, коли у нас, ви знаєте, блекаут, то світло відключають, то обстріли постійні, людям потрібно переключатися на щось інше. І якраз на мій погляд, той же футбол чи інший вид спорту дає змогу людям трошки... Ну, побачити те, що вони хочуть бачити, а не тільки сидіти в бомбосховищах, в метро, ховатися від ракет. І десь, коли світло дуже довго відключають, це теж не так все легко. Але дякувати нашій країні, нашим людям і нашим захисникам, в першу чергу, що все рівно вони дають змогу нам, футболістам, грати, займатися своєю улюбленою справою. Це респект і повага тільки нашим хлопцям з СУ. А наші люди підтримують нас і все рівно показують, що ми живемо своїм життям. І не так ми боїмося ці обстріли. Ми дуже сильна нація, я навіть не, не знаю, які знайти слова для цього, але це все все рівно підтримує і допомагає нашим людям, що ми дійсно займаємося тією справою, яку ми вміємо робити і яку ми хочемо робити. Якби ми не почали цей сезон футбольний, я думаю, що Україна втратила б місця в Лізі Чемпіонів і в Лізі Європи, а так ми все рівно тримаємося на плаву. І це дуже добре. Президент Зеленський just before Christmas said 184 athletes had died in the war. And obviously we don't hear about all of that because there are so many people that have died as part of the war effort in your country. This number just keep going higher and higher. And uh, we don't have any choice. We have to stand up and defend our country, defend our, our uh, our democracy. You have been out there a number of times and we've got some footage of you in, I think it was Irpin, was it, at the Champion yeah. Stadium? Explain that to us because those are powerful images. On the pitch it was so many holes from the missiles, the bomb, Everywhere was the pieces of the metal pieces from the bomb, and I saw these two children was between these big holes, just passing the football uh, ball, and that was a surprise to me. Like I, I saw that, and in my mind immediately come the images and what this strong power have the the sport in the world. So, so these young boys were, were playing football? Yeah, playing football in, in the, the stadium, in yeah. amongst the, the shell holes yeah, yeah, in, exactly. in a destroyed stadium on the pitch, which yeah. is destroyed as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, we walked there, uh, and I, obviously I introduced myself to the boys, he recognized me, we, we play a little bit games together, and I talked to the mayor, and I, I asked him what I can do for you, you know, for for help, you know, any project would you, you think it'd be helpful for the for the people to 
the hospital, so some rebuilt rebuilt uh, infrastructure, something. And the mayor said to me, Andre, please help us to rebuild the stadium because uh, the family start to come back, and most of the family have a boy or girl, and we need to rebuild some sport facility. Do you ever see a time where they could give up? We're a year into a very difficult war. There's been horrific loss in Ukraine. Will they, Ukrainian people ever give up? I, I can't see where we give up. I, you know, the, 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 the strength of the Ukrainian people just to have freedom in their life. This is for what we're fighting. We're fighting for our uh, territory. We're fighting for our future. I hope, uh, you know, situation change quickly and the peace come back in my country.